welcome to the science class students today we are going to study the second part or part 2 of the chapter our universe the solar system so all of you open page number 95 of your book in the last part part 1 we finished up to the planets the details of the planets and now today we are starting with the topic the earth all of you follow the book earth is the only planet of the solar system on which life exists we have already learned that it has water in liquid form oxygen in air and warmth of the sun to nourish life different forms of life plants animals insects birds humans all of them coexist on the earth now what is the meaning of coexist that is they exist together with one another the presence of life makes it the most beautiful and unique planet so earth is the most beautiful and unique planet till now it is the only planet that has life however it had not always been like this so previously it was not like it is uh, as now earth was formed approximately 4.5 billion years ago from a cloud of dust initially it was very hot it was like a huge ball of fire molten rocks and hot gases now with time the hot gases cooled down and they formed clouds there were continuous rains that cooled its outer surface the surface became hard on cooling so after getting cooled it became hard also the water got collected on the surface in liquid form the gases formed the atmosphere slowly the conditions became suitable for life to take form so initially the condition of the earth was totally different and thereafter after lots of changes the earth became a place where life can take its form is it clear to all okay so that's all about the earth now we are going to study the layers of the earth i hope all of you are familiar with the layers of the earth because just before a few days we have learnt it in our social studies class so now we are going to discuss the layers of the earth all of you follow the picture the earth is made up of three layers isn't it so what are the three layers core mantle and crust i hope all of you can recollect the first one we are going to study is core the innermost layer of the earth is called the core it is the hottest part which is made of dense minerals mainly iron and nickel now follow the picture and go to the next page that is page number 96 the core has a solid inner core and a molten outer core the inner core has a temperature of about 4000 degrees centigrade okay so that's all about the first layer that is the core the innermost layer we are going to discuss and we have already discussed sorry the innermost layer is that and it is named as core now the second part is mantle The middle layer of the earth is called the mantle. It is the thickest layer which is made of rocks rich in minerals such as iron and magnesium. So that's all about the second middle layer. And now we are going to read about the third layer that is the outermost layer of the earth and it is called the crust. It is the coolest and thinnest layer. Life exists on this layer. oceans and mountains are also present on this layer it is made of rocks such as granite and basalt the crust is divided into different plates okay so you will remember the name of the rocks with which it is made of and they are granite and basalt you will underline both of them so that's all about the three types of layers the innermost one the middle one and the outermost one now all of you go to the next part 
the crust and mantle float on the molten outer core they used to float they are always being pushed upwards with great pressure by hot gases and molten rocks so hot gases and molten rocks they always give pressure and push these parts on which side upwards these results in the formation of mountains due to the extreme high pressure that exists below the surface of the earth some weak spots in the crust break open the hot gases and molten rocks called magma underline the word magma eject out through these openings and this thing is called volcano so this is how volcanoes are formed when a volcano erupts the magma comes out of the volcano the magma when reaches at the surface of the earth is called lava so the inner molten la molten rock is called magma and when it is reaching at the surface of the earth it is called lava clear to all all of you underline magma and lava these are the main keywords of this chapter next is the points that are given here volcanoes that erupt regularly are called active volcanoes so active volcanoes definition is volcanoes that erupt regularly they are called active volcanoes for example you can take mount etna in sicily in italy has been erupting from the past 5 lakh years now volcanoes that have not erupted for a long time but can erupt again are called dormant volcanoes for example mount kilimanjaro in tanzania africa is a dormant volcano and now we are going to see the picture of an active volcano and and uh, another one is of dormant volcano okay now the third one is volcanoes that have not erupted during recorded history are called extinct volcanoes so extinct volcanoes is a third type of volcano they have not erupted for a long time there is no record of their eruption for example the chimborazo volcano in ecuador and the ship rock volcano in new mexico are considered as extinct volcano so now we are going to see the picture of extinct volcano okay now we will move to the next page that is page number 97 and we are going to discuss we have already discussed in other subjects that is the movement of the earth we know earth has two types of movements right so we are going to study them here the earth shows two kinds of movements one is called rotation and the second one is called revolution you just follow the picture given on page number 97 very nicely drawn all of you will draw the picture i will give you the list of the diagrams that you will have to practice now follow this picture here the earth spins on its axis like a spinning top i hope all of you have seen a top and you have also known how it moves how it spins so just like a spinning top earth also spins on its axis and this movement is called a rotation you can see the axis here in the picture yes so depending on the axis the earth used to move the earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation the axis is an imaginary line so all of you please remember students that the axis is an imaginary line and it is running through the center of the earth from the north pole to the south pole okay you can see the picture of axis in this one okay the day and night on earth are caused because of the rotation of earth on its axis our axis is tilted so it is not straight it is a bit tilted at an angle of 23.5 degree okay you will learn this line also there is another imaginary line that runs around the center of the earth can you see in the picture and this imaginary line is at an angle of 90 degree to the axis it is known as the equator it divides the earth into two equal halves 
the one half that consists of north pole is called the northern hemisphere and the other half that consists of south pole is called the southern hemisphere now we are going to discuss one activity that you can also do in your home and that you will give you a clear concept about the movement of the earth of the rotation okay what you will do in this activity take a globe and place it in a dark room can you see the picture given here okay shine a torch on the globe what do you observe the part of the globe facing the torch is lighted up it shows day so this part is showing day the part of the globe which is away from the torch appears dark it shows night the other part of the globe where there is no light it is showing night now you take a marker and mark point a on the shiny side of the globe that is on the day side and point b on the dark side that is on the night side so there is day at point a and night at place point b okay this is very easy concept now slowly rotate the globe round at the same place after some time point a comes on the dark side and point b on the shining side thus point a now has night and point b day so with the movement of the globe that is which is presenting here the arc we can see the position is changed and now the day position has gone to the night position and the night position has come to the day position okay so it proves with the movement of the earth the day and night situations are changed if you keep on rotating the globe point a will again have day and point b will again have night and this activity proves that rotation of the earth causes a place to go through phases of day and night so after doing this activity it should be clear to all of you how day and night are happening on the earth and how the movement of the earth itself is causing it okay so all of you can do this if possible okay now let us move to page number 98 the earth goes round the sun is a fixed orbit so till now we have learned the movement of the earth on its axis and that movement is called rotation now we are going to study the another movement of earth which is happening centering round the sun and the earth is moving following its orbit and this orbit is fixed always remember all the orbits of the plants sorry planets are fixed this movement is called revolution art takes 365 plus 1/4 days to complete one revolution this period is called a solar year so this entire period of uh, fulfilling or of completing a revolution is called a solar year or simply a year okay is it clear to all have you understood the difference of rotation and revolution okay now we are going to discuss revolution in detail change of seasons the revolution of earth around the sun is causing change of seasons on the earth i hope all of you know the seasons that are happening on the earth like summer monsoon autumn late autumn then winter then spring right when the north pole is tilted please follow the picture before starting this part there is a picture of revolution of earth around the sun all of you follow it when the north pole is tilted towards the sun the northern hemisphere receives direct sun rays when it is tilted means it is a little bit nearer moving in a way so that the northern hemisphere or the north pole is a little bit nearer to the sun in that way the northern hemisphere receives direct sun rays it results in hotter and longer days and accordingly the northern hemisphere will have summer season okay at the same time 
the south pole is tilted away that is it is a bit far from the sun so the southern hemisphere receives slanted sun rays what is the meaning of slanted that is which is not straight a little bit tilted the days are cooler and shorter here and thus it is causing winter season in the southern hem hemisphere okay so the part which is a little bit far from the sun we are getting winter in that part and which is nearer to the sun we are getting summer in that part and it also means that when you are having summer in the northern hemisphere you are having winter in the southern hemisphere when the north pole is tilted away from the sun the northern hemisphere receives slanted sun rays now we are discussing the opposite situation when the northern hemisphere is a little bit far away from the sun and it is receiving the slanted sun rays it is having winter it thus has winter during this time the southern hemisphere receives direct sun rays okay so when the northern hemisphere is having slanted sun rays the southern hemisphere is getting direct sun rays and thus it is causing summer there noon is the hottest part of the day all of you underline this statement noon is the hottest part of the day it is because the sun is directly overhead during the noon time the sun rays travels the least distance to reach us in the morning and evening the sun is low in the sky the sun rays are slanted that time they travel longer distance to reach us so morning and evening time are cooler the equator receives almost the same amount of sunlight throughout the year the seasons do not change here and it is like summer throughout the year so the places which are situated on equator that is the line imaginary line which is dividing the earth in two halves i hope all of you can remember so on these places those places which are situated on these equator they are having summer throughout the year now what would happen if earth's axis were not tilted this is a very important question and now we are going to get the answer of this question so move to page number 99 everyone if earth's axis were not tilted the north pole and the south pole would always be at the same distance from the sun the two hemisphere would receive the same amount of sunlight throughout the year and thus there would be no change of seasons there in india there are five seasons in between summer and winter there is the autumn season in between winter and summer there is the spring season it is neither too hot nor too cold during autumn and spring season so these two seasons are quite pleasant in india the fifth season is the monsoon during this season it rains for most of the days and monsoon comes after summer and before autumn now what is written here look at a globe name two countries one that will have summer when there is winter in other country and all of you will do this question by yourself without my help you will find out two countries and one of them will have summer and at the same time the other one will have winter okay this is your work without any one's help you will see at the uh, picture of the earth or you will see the globe and you will do this answer now let us move to the assessment zone all of you follow we are going to do the objective type questions here in this video and all of you will follow the video and write down the answers of these questions in your book not in the copy no assessment zone objective type question should be written in the copy for copy work i will provide you only question answers okay let us start page number 99 first question tick the correct answer 
Question number one. Which of the following is the cause of seasons on the earth? And your options are rotation of the earth, revolution of the earth, earth's tilted axis and number D both B and C. And the correct option is number D both B and C. All of you tick the option in your book. Let us move to the next page, page number 100. Number 2. Which of the following is the cause of day and night on the earth? And your options are rotation of the earth, revolution of the earth, earth's tilted axis and number D both B and C. And the correct option or the correct answer is rotation of the earth. Number 3. Which planet has maximum number of moons? And the answer is Jupiter. Number 4. Which planets are at the middle of the solar system? Four options are given. Earth and Mars, Mars and Jupiter, Jupiter and Saturn, none of these. And the correct answer is number B, Mars and Jupiter. Last one. Which planet is called the morning star? And the correct answer is Venus. All of you tick the correct answer. Now we will move to the next question that is answer in one word. Question number one. Imaginary line that divides the earth into two equal halves. What it is called? It is called equator. Number two. The movement of the earth around the sun is called revolution. Number three, the movement of the earth on its own axis, it is called rotation. Number four, objects that revolve around the planets, they are called satellites, we have already learnt. Number five, fixed paths of planets around the sun and those paths are called orbits. So the last answer is orbits. Now we will move to the next question that is the fill in the blanks. And the first one is the planet dash has not been named after Roman and Greek gods. Only one planet is there and that name of that planet is Earth. Number two dash is also called the red planet. Which one is called the red planet? Yes, the answer is Mars. Number three, dash is the co closest planet, very sorry, closest planet to the sun. And the answer is Mercury. Number four, dash is the farthest planet from the sun. And the answer is Neptune. Number five, the last one. Dash has the maximum number of moons. And the answer is Jupiter. We have already done it in the first question. Let us move to the next one. State true or false. Number one. Earth is the largest planet of the solar system. No, this is false. Which is the largest planet of the solar system? Jupiter. Number two, earth is the only planet that has life on it. Very true. So this one is true. Number three, noon is the coolest part of the day. Totally wrong. It is the hottest part of the day. So this statement is false. Number four, the mantle is the hottest layer of the earth. No, again this is wrong. Number Four will be false. Now the last one. When the north pole is tilted away from the sun, the northern hemisphere receives slanted sun rays. It thus has winter season. Very true. So this one will be true. So that's all about your objective type questions. I will provide you some keywords and the question answers. 
separately for your copy work. So all of you finish the chapter, read it thoroughly, learn the objective type answers and stay well. Take care. Bye.